Welcome to Collective Couch Conversations, a candid series about leadership and organizational development. I'm Rebecca Ume Crook, and today I'm joined by the luminous Mithoni Gakwa for a conversation on values and culture. Thank you so much, Ume. Um, I have heard that uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Do you agree with this? <laughs> I do. Mm-hmm. I think so. Mm-hmm. To the extent that I think that culture is the bedrock that enables everything else, our programs, mm. our impact, our day-to-day, you know, everything I think comes from this culture that we've created. So I think it is, yeah, incredibly important. And before you ask me what I think our culture <laughs> is, I want to ask you how yeah. you experience you know, you came to Metis two years ago. Mm-hmm. You have worked in other places yeah. that are, well, I've heard that are, are a little different from yeah. how we do things at Metis. Mm-hmm. What is your experience of our culture? Um, well, um, this is the first organization that I've worked for that uh, team members actually leave out the core values. Mm-hmm. Um, and my experience of the culture has been that... Um, we do what we say, yeah, as much as possible. We strive to live up to our core values and our HR success factors. Um, and our culture has so much duality. It's both and. I've seen us really push hard and work hard to redefine excellence and still create um, a room where it's safe for people to just show up in their most authentic selves, for people to grow and to be honest about where they are and where they're going. Um, I've experienced this culture as one that is very open in terms of communication. Um, I worked somewhere once where my boss told me that as a manager, uh, team members, if they ever gave me feedback, I needed to deny that feedback, wow. even if it was true. Mm. And my experience here at Metis has been that we're very open in our communication, we're very authentic. I can come to you as my manager and say, oh, Rebecca, you're doing this amazing thing. And I think you can improve on this other thing, which has really strengthened um, our collaboration, our trust, and we've been able to do so much and achieve so much because we've built that authenticity and that openness to communicate. So that's how I've experienced our culture. It's just such a beautiful culture. Um, Yeah, and I'm curious because I've been here for two years. What's the journey been like to get into where we are and building this culture? Great question. Yeah. It has been a journey. I think there was a a dream mm-hmm. that I had for what it might feel like mm-hmm. as we work to create a fellowship experience that mm-hmm. enables leaders to collaborate, to challenge their preconceived notions, to grow, mm-hmm. to evolve. Mm-hmm. Like if we want that to be true for the people that we serve, mm-hmm. we ha- it, it starts with us. Yeah, we have to embody that sense of continuous learning. We mm-hmm. have to embody that collaboration mm-hmm. that we want to 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 have a ripple effect out there for adults, and then of course for their children mm-hmm. who they serve. Mm-hmm. So it started with that dream, that sense of okay. If we want this to be true for the people we serve, we need to practice that Mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. So we came up with our core values, which we made complete sense. We we wanted them to be actionable Mm -hmm. in end of 2018, early 2019. Actually, Mm -hmm. we came up with our core values, Mm -hmm. which are do hard things, go further together, Mm -hmm. listen and learn. Mm -hmm. Redefine excellence and do small things with great love. Great love. Mm-hmm. And so we've we've defined those core values, and then um, the Metis community, our fellows at that point, created a manifesto mm-hmm. which incorporated those core values. So there was real like a sense of co-creation. Mm-hmm. And then later on with the team, as the team grew, it mm-hmm. became really important. Like core values can feel very airy fairy. Like yeah. they're really nice. You could like put it in the wall and just mm-hmm. be like, yeah. I didn't want it to be like that. I mm-hmm. actually do want to be someone who does hard things. I actually do want to be someone who goes the distance together in partnership with other people. I want to go further together. Yeah. I do want to listen and learn. Mm-hmm. So together with the team, we created a very simple T chart and on one column it's like 
what does this value mean? Mm -hmm. So, okay, we do hard things. What does that mean we do? Mm -hmm. What does it mean we don't for further to together? Like, it, mm -hmm. it does, doesn't mean that we make every, every single decision together mm -hmm. collaboratively, democratically. So, yeah. it, just clarifying mm -hmm. those things um, mm -hmm. was a really important part of our journey mm -hmm. um, in 2019. And then, of course, whenever we feel that uh, there hasn't been a science uh, mm -hmm. to this, but but revisiting mm -hmm. them and, and adding to that list as a team as it's yeah. necessary. Of course, everyone goes through onboarding mm -hmm. um, and, and core values are part of that. And I think mm -hmm. that's part of having that as the foundation mm -hmm. of our culture, I think has been a really important part of the journey. And so starting mm -hmm. from kind of the dream and the vision of it and then mm -hmm. bringing it down to make it actionable mm -hmm. has been like the journey over the last six years. And I think mm -hmm. even when you joined, mm -hmm. we had this onboarding process. I think you had yeah. the teach heart and all of that, but I think mm -hmm. part of your role that's been so tremendous for our team has been, you know, bringing those core values to life in actionable ways. So in our HR systems yeah. and our quarterly reviews. We mm -hmm. now have a 360 review, mm -hmm. you know, that embodies our listen and learn mm -hmm. value. And of course the 360 review also has questions around how team members are living out the core values. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to, you know, their KPIs. Yeah. But I think that it's, it's, I think there's a way in which we can build rituals mm -hmm. and systems mm -hmm. to help us, care for and live out our culture because I think it's nice to have this vision and this desire and dream and intention towards mm -hmm. a culture that feels a certain way yeah. and it's a separate thing mm -hmm. to build um, traditions and systems that will mm -hmm. enable that culture. Mm -hmm. um, so having frameworks, having yes. rubrics, having mm -hmm. processes and procedures mm -hmm. that bake in that culture. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so cool to hear you explain your experience of our culture. And my hope would be that, mm -hmm. you know, though I was part of the small group of people that came up with the core values, that actually they are experienced and learned and lived out mm -hmm. by everyone. And that we have systems that outlive Mm -hmm. You know, any one person, if you were yeah. to get the opportunity to fly to the moon tomorrow, you know, Meta's culture wouldn't just go poof because you've <laughs> created these systems and it, it's, it's entrenched and Meta's culture doesn't live within you mm -hmm. alone or, or me anyone. alone or any one person. So yeah. I think that that has been our journey is making mm -hmm. sure that mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of codified and in our, yeah. in our life blood. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're talking about the rituals and the systems that we have put in place. Um, on my journey, I thought that we needed to invest significantly into like um, incentives and whatnot to build strong cultures. And my experience here at Metis has been there are actually some very easy ways yeah. to um, incorporate routines and um, activities that help build that culture. Do you want to speak to that a bit? I think seeing and celebrating people when they're living out our core values is yeah. really an important way to keep this virtuous cycle mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. and remind us how good it feels to actually yeah. live into our values. Mm -hmm. So a couple really easy things that we do. One, mm -hmm. we have weekly shout outs and this has looked different. Like at one point we did them mm -hmm. on Slack. Mm -hmm. um, we now do them in person. We write mm -hmm. them on sticky notes. Yeah. And just, yeah, give them to each person. And I think I've heard time and time again, mm. like how much that means for people to look back and mm. see what people see in them. I know when I'm having a rough day, looking back and receiving your affirmation feels really good. Mm. Um, and so sometimes actually the, the genesis of that was around our core values where actually we yeah. pick a core value of the week mm. and then we'd give shout outs related to that. Mm -hmm. Now we've opened it up, but I think you can make these systems kind of work for your needs and the team's needs at any given point. So mm -hmm. shout outs is one. We have the Baobab Award, which mm -hmm. is a Baobab and it's chosen by a team member for another team member mm -hmm. who they feel like has exemplified our values. Mm -hmm. And so it gets passed. If I'm awarded one month mm -hmm. and the next month I'm looking around the mm -hmm. team and deciding who's really lived this out well and mm -hmm. I award it to them. And, and so in that way it's, it's, it's not just like 
one leader, like the CEO, deciding who's done like employee of the month. It's all of us yeah. seeing and mm. witnessing each other and catching each other in the act of doing good work. Mm. Um, we have two by two feedback for our quarterly reviews where feedback is given up, as you said, as well yeah. as down and it's mm -hmm. things that are going really well and next mm -hmm. steps and things that could be changed for the better and next steps. That's, I think, really valuable. I think that we might say, oh, we're open and we, mm -hmm. we really value, you know, upward feedback, but if they're not systems... That provide space for that. Exactly. It becomes really because, difficult, right? Yeah, because there yeah. is a power dynamic. Of course, yeah. And how do we just remove the barriers of entry? How do we make it seem so normal? Like, mm -hmm. this is it. There's no... It's not... You don't have to jump extra hurdles or build up extra courage, per se, to, to bring it up all on your own. There's, like, a system in place that's going to help you. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Can you think of other things that we do? Hmm... We have, I mean, trickling down to our fellows, I guess our fellows agreement. We also introduce the values to them. Yeah. Um, we have lunch and learns once a month mm -hmm. that you've really worked on a lot. And, yeah. And that is peer led. Mm hmm. Right, so every team member gets a chance to lead lunch and learn for the month and choose the topic that we'll focus on. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be wide open. Right now, we're in a season of really wanting to work on our HR success factors. So, mm -hmm. lunch and learns have to be tied to an HR success factor, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I can't think of more right now. But what is coming up for me is how everything is intertwined from the uh, ABCD mm. that we uh, encourage. Every fellow is driving that in their um, learners, and I see us leaving that out and how that is intertwined to the HR success factors, the core values, so yeah. that in everything that we are doing, we are constantly being reminded. And the fact that they're all over the walls That's in true. our office space, so that we get to see them and remember, oh, these are our values, these are the outcomes that we are driving in learners, and so yeah. it comes more naturally to yeah. us. Yeah. yeah, And I see, too, mm -hmm. that when we give each other feedback yeah. that's developmental mm -hmm. or if we're to have like a team member be on a PIP like a mm -hmm. performance improvement plan yeah. a lot of that is the language that we use to describe what could be better mm -hmm. um, is tied to our core values like we're not mm -hmm. living out redefine excellence this is why it's so mm -hmm. important like I even watch you even as you give me mm -hmm. feedback sometimes it's like you know yeah one of our values is this. Mm. You could live it better by doing this, this, and this. Yeah. So I think that's that's really cool. Mm. And how do you see our culture morphing as we become bigger as a team? We now have an office space. We didn't have one before. Uh, the team is bigger. Yeah. Um, how obviously we will change, but some things will remain very core to us. Um, how do you see the culture morphing as we go? That is up to you all. <laughs> as in, as in, you know, as not mentioned on these collective conversations, you know, I'm transitioning from my role as executive director onto the yeah. board. Mm -hmm. And I think that I have biases for mm -hmm. my own upbringing. I have, I have a certain way of doing things that mm -hmm. is baked into, because I brought my whole self to the creation of the organization and there are ways in which that's really great and I'm really happy that people are flourishing. Mm -hmm. And if there's a point where there are other things that could be done to help you flourish better, that are more culturally relevant, that feel more true to you and to Metis, like I think it will morph that way. Mm -hmm. I just I hope that our North Star continues to be how are we how are we showing up in the best way possible to achieve mm -hmm. our mission of ensuring that all children get to thrive? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I do think I do think culture is culture evolves, mm -hmm. and so I think as more people come, mm -hmm. um, they get to both they they get to shape the culture and they, they get to learn from our culture as well. I think at this point, mm -hmm. you know, everybody is an ambassador and a contributor to Metis mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. And I've seen ways in which we've had to give feedback, you know, to maintain that we've had to learn and grow because we all fall short of our core values. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that like, 
I trust our team already does that so naturally. When something doesn't mm-hmm. feel in alignment, you bring it up. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that that will... I have every faith that like the core things to us mm-hmm. will continue and the ones that don't fit anymore will fade away and you'll come up with new mm-hmm. systems and ways of being that do serve you mm-hmm. and our community better. Mm. Beautiful. Um, and I like that you've said that every so often we fall short, yeah? Mm. What behaviors and uh, postures have you observed or are you present that would negatively affect our culture? Ooh, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one of our HR success factors, so our HR success factors for those listening are things that, you know, in order to to succeed um, and do your best work at Matches, we've identified these different factors. Mm -hmm. And they are, they they also grow out of our core values. Um, One of those factors is we are entrepreneurial leaders. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the things that wouldn't fly at Metis, and why this is so important is because we're supporting a community of entrepreneurs mm-hmm. who are creating innovations and who are really, who are agents of change. Mm-hmm. And so if we're supporting people to become agents of change, we also need to feel and tap into that agency. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, it wouldn't be the right culture fit. And And again, there's not like, I don't think our culture is the best culture. Yeah. It's the best for us. But I'm not mm-hmm. saying that our culture is better than a different organization's culture or, mm-hmm. you know, should be spread out to every single organization everywhere. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, like, I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, but if someone, so, so if someone is entering our organization or mm-hmm. like a part of us and kind of is more sitting on the sidelines Mm -hmm. or doesn't take responsibility for their actions Mm -hmm. or sees problems and consistently over time, even with support, Mm -hmm. doesn't seek to find solutions, just only can find out problems, problems, problems. Mm -hmm. Like that wouldn't be a good fit. Or someone who comes in, um, in Japanese, we say monku monku. If they're just monku monku, <laughs> they're, they're just complaining, mm-hmm. like that would be a real downer because our team and our community, which has mm-hmm. now grown to, well, we've convened over 900 educationists and mm-hmm. our LM community is over 160 mm-hmm. leaders. They are all working their butts off to, to create a better world. They're finding problems and creating solutions. So it just wouldn't be a good culture fit if someone came in and was just poking mm-hmm. holes and and kind of complaining. So Mm -hmm. we, we would point that out in a Mm -hmm. team member or even in a fellow. Right. And we, of course, like recruitment is, is essential for this. Like Mm -hmm. the, um, we probably wouldn't, you know, the tasks that you devise experiential tasks, um, when someone applies to Metis would weed that out. So Mm -hmm. kind of a lack of, lack of agency or lack of responsibility Mm -hmm. wouldn't do well. Um, again, uh, a closeness to feedback or like mm-hmm. a brittleness around getting feedback mm-hmm. also would probably not vibe with our culture mm-hmm. um, because we are open like that and we are, um, you know, you will get feedback when you are at Betis. <laughs> sure. So inevitably. Um, inevitably, yeah, we mm-hmm. get a lot of feedback and give a lot of feedback to each other. So I think Um, an aversion to feedback wouldn't be a good part of our culture. Mm -hmm. Um, And any sort of dishonesty where you're also not able Mm -hmm. to give feedback Mm -hmm. or, yeah. And I would say someone who's not, I mean, this sounds like a no brainer, but if you're not there to work hard and also evolve yourself, Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't be a culture fit. And again, I just, I want to highlight, like this doesn't mean that it's the best culture in the world. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine. I think Mm -hmm. there are people out there who find lots of meaning and purpose in their life. And work is just a small part of their lives or an inconsequential part. Mm -hmm. I don't judge those folks. That's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, at Metis, you know, we all have boundaries. We have other full things about our lives that we do. Mm-hmm. And I would say that we all place value on our work, that it's more than just 
a job for Mm -hmm. us. And I'm saying this like knowing that I'm the founder and so there's certain things that come with that. But Mm -hmm. in what I've observed from people, Mm -hmm. this is work that makes people come alive and it's more than just a job. Maybe you can speak to that. But I I think that um, probably it wouldn't be a great fit if you are just kind of here to clock in Mm -hmm. from nine to five and like call it a day. Mm -hmm. That probably wouldn't be a fit with our culture. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Um, I agree a hundred percent. I think purpose above everything else. Um, and for me, I transitioned from a place where um, there was entrepreneurial leadership, but there was not a lot of agency. So coming to this organization, which is at a startup level, and there's a lot of you have to solve the problems. You don't just identify the problems. Yeah. Who's gonna solve them? Uh, and I've had you ask me that a lot. Um, so I've come to you and. Um, I have a problem and you stare at me and then you're like, "Uh uh-huh, what do you think? In fact, that's embedded in my mind. So you always encouraged encouraged me to like solve problems. Um, And that's exciting and that keeps me going. So I feel like I'm part of the solution. Oh, you are. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. Yeah, it makes you feel like um, there's more to it than just being a Metis team member. I'm like solving a big problem in the world. I'm part of a vision that's bigger than myself. There's ownership, so I think that's a beautiful part of our culture. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is interesting. I don't know um, what it's been like for you as the ED um, managing different parts of the Matis uh, community. You're leading the board. You're leading the team. You're part of the community. So all of that is intertwined. How have you navigated the Matis culture with all those different bodies? The Rebecca culture as a person. Um, and being a brand ambassador for Metis, um, lived out that culture and driven it across the different uh, parts that you manage or lead or are part of. Yeah. Mm. I think once we got really clear on our values, who we want to be, yeah. then it became really easy to attract those types of people who mm. also share those values. Like I have a yeah. set of personal values mm-hmm. um, and they overlap with our organizational values, but they're not the same Mm -hmm. um, per se. Like, you know, joy and community and growth are at the Mm -hmm. heart um, and courage are at the heart of, like, me as a person, I I think. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really align myself with the Metis values and I really Mm -hmm. buy into them. And so I think that just that that's true for me and also you and like yeah. everyone who applies to be a part of our team. Mm-hmm. It's also true for our fellows. Like I think that once we are clear about the core of who we are, then we mm-hmm. start attracting the right people. Yeah. So our board members are really aligned to mm-hmm. our values and mm-hmm. they said yes to be a part of our volunteer board mm-hmm. Because they believe in our mission and vision, mm-hmm. and also the way we go about pursuing this work, they're radical different personalities, mm. really different personalities, yeah. um, from different cultural backgrounds and contexts, with different skills. We have very analytical people. Mm-hmm. We have—I have a board member who wants to do one-on-one meetings with me barefoot in the forest. So they're super mm. different, but we are aligned of this common vision, mm-hmm. and. And our values really do hold us together. So I would Mm -hmm. say that it becomes actually really easy when you have a unified culture to then, Mm -hmm. you know, start attracting people, even if they're plugging into our community in different ways, they're aligned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And when I joined Metis, I felt like at my core, my values aligned with the Metis values. And I wasn't very Metis-y. And I've grown into, now I can say I'm very Metis-y, you know. I was aligned in the values at the start, but... There's just a behavior. There's just a way of being. Um, that I've How did that into. happen? Like, what do you mean? I, I know what you mean, but can you, like, break that down for us? <laughs> um, well, I think there's a language to Metis. There's a way of behavior to Metis that is very aligned to our core values. And the more mm-hmm. I have gotten to understand our strategic plan and the why we are doing what we are doing, the easier it has been for me to communicate that with myself as I wake up in the morning and I'm like, why am I doing this? Now I understand it easier and to communicate and share that vision with other people in the community. And that has taken time, yeah? It's taken intentionality, it's taken a lot of conversations, a lot of exposure to the community and it rubs off, yeah? As I interact more with very Metis people, it has rubbed off and I feel 
quite messy um, and that allows me to extend Jace even as new team members come and we are aligned on like the core of who we are and why we are doing this work um, and just get to the place where we are speaking a yeah. common language. Yeah, the shared yeah. language is also an important part of culture Yeah, and that also takes time. You could have a felt alignment with an organization on mm. a mission yeah. and then getting that that language, I mm. guess we we acquire that with time, yeah. yeah. And we build that ch- shared language with time, mm. yeah. Cool. Um, my last last question for you. I don't know what it is. I'm making it up now. Uh, what core value do you feel closest to at this time in this season of your life? Oh, what core value do I feel aligned to? Oh, do hard things, go further together, mm-hmm. listen and learn, redefine excellence, do small things with great love. You know what? Surprisingly, because this is the core value that I feel like is most about like work and outputs and mm-hmm. that core value is? Redefine excellence. Yeah. Yeah. That's usually how I think about redefined excellence. It's mm-hmm. holding a high bar and like yeah. redefining where that bar is mm-hmm. um, and not like challenging the status quo. Mm-hmm. But actually in this season and in this season of my life, when I think about redefining excellence, it's like I'm in a, I'm about to enter this huge season of transition. Mm-hmm. And so my contribution is going to be redefined Mm -hmm. my role as a leader is going to be redefined Mm -hmm. I in many ways might be redefining many things in my life and I want to live a a beautiful intentional yeah I want to have a well-lived life and one that is excellent and I think that what is excellent though excellent doesn't mean following someone else's blue Print for success mm. and Metis doesn't follow anyone else's blueprint mm. for success we've stayed true you know in terms of our impact in terms of what scale means to us mm-hmm. in terms of um, what what greatness looks and feels like mm-hmm. is wholly our own and I feel like we've co-created that with our our community and I think for me personally I'm aligned to that because I'm like you get to rethink what is excellence mm. as an individual look like, what do you, what what feels like the most beautiful and true life mm. that you can build. So redefine excellence. Mm. Wow. I'm excited about this new face for my tis and for you. For Thank each you. and every one of us. Thank you. Me yeah. too. And I think I think that's the other thing is like no matter what happens, mm. we can weather big changes, big challenges like a pandemic. Mm. We can weather stress. We can we can weather arguments. Mm. <laughs> we can weather frustrations. We can weather sh- short tempers. Mm. We can weather misunderstandings. Mm. Um, we can weather triumph and victories without getting you know too big headed because of our culture. So mm. I think yeah, whatever the future of Metis holds, I just have a a huge faith and, and trust and excitement because it is on this bedrock that we believe in. Mm. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.